call it in JDL, the chain reaction. It's simply a system where houses buy houses, right? Where you buy your first property investment and you borrow against it by another one, against those two you buy another one, away you go. But what you see, the lines there, they're not just pretty lines to separate things. they call called firewalls. And firewalls and understanding about finance so you don't allow all your assets to be cross-collateralized. See, one of the beautiful things, I'm saying this in, a, in using some phraseology, one of the beautiful things about the recession, because there's nothing beautiful in a recession, is that this system works. What I'm about showing to you, because 2008 comes along, and you know how many clients were lost because of it? None. Because the, firewall, the firewalls work. It's simply a separation of you taking care of your assets. Let me show you. So your uh, houses buy houses, and then against the first property investment, not against your own home, but against your first property investment, you borrow for the shares, and then you borrow for the managed funds, the bonds, the shares, and everything else. So never again you're going to have to go with the argument about shares are better, properties are better, and trying to make a, a decision. Why wouldn't you have both? If you understand what I'm saying here, you will accumulate everything that is possible for you and your family. And if you can teach this to your children, they will pick it up and run with us. Guys, may I show you something else of pure wisdom. Here it is. Our forefathers were farmers, probably peasant farmers. Doesn't matter where your background is. So a long time ago, they were just existing just like my grandfather, fishing. And then this thing called cities started to happen. The Industrial Revolution started to happen. And the Industrial Revolution provided jobs. So people went and they had, what? Manual jobs, labor jobs. So mothers became wise and said to their children, get an education so you get a better job. So then you become a doctor, a dentist, a lawyer, and you get paid more money. But you know what the distinction really is, folks? People go and went and have incredible jobs and they spend it all. You get rich is when you accumulate assets. That's the only way out. That is the only way out. So in a country so young like Australia, bloody foreigners come here, the hogs come here, right? And they become multimillionaires is that they see this as a real possibility. By the way, lots of Australians now on this path. And this is my passion because this is basically what we have been doing since we first got here. Guys, what I'm showing you here is basically what happened to me. I bought the first house. You know why? Because they let me. And then I bought another one. You know why? Because they let me. And the more, then I started buying some shares. But because I could. And that is the chain reaction. It's just a system. It is just a system. Now, as a chain reaction, how good is that? Honestly, how good is that? I understand that some of you may be looking at this and saying, so what? But guys, this is an ultimate structure. If I told you right now that I bought this house for 39000 it's worth four hundred, and then that one house has bought me two other houses, would you accept that? Got it. You would. Now, if I told you that those two houses, I bought them, right, with a period of time, and they too have grown in value. And from those two other houses, I have actually borrowed from them, against them, to actually buy shares. See, in this conversation here, there's some, a lot of amazing things, is that in the lines, we call them firewalls, you could actually build buffers in them. Let me just run this very quickly, because right now we saw so many people lose money on their managed funds and their shares, and it was against their own home, and it just took a hit. Their home just took a hit, and some people are actually worse off. But check this out. Imagine that against property number three, we're going to decide to borrow a guest and put some money in shares. So let's just say I pulled $100,000 against that, and I sat inside of a finance facility, and instead of pulling the whole 100000 I pulled sixty, And then I leveraged the sixty. You see the, the line between the house and the shares? That's a firewall, meaning I set up the finance facility here, pulled the deposit, and went with another institution. 
Yep. Absolutely. And then what we're going to do here is get the $60,000 and leverage it. Now, guys, if you get the phone call that says, oh, the value of your shares have lost value, you know, and we have a contract here for 60000 double to 120 and you lost value, you have to put money in. Do you remember that I set the facility for 100 only pulled 60 That means there's $40,000 sitting in there in the buffer. Now, guys, this is only going to be made for you is when somebody sits down to work for you. There's no one trying to flog you a managed fund or flog your finance. This is designed. This is tailor-made, right? So the reality for me is this. You tell me, sir, you tell me how much would you like to retire on? See, if you told me 200000 you told me 300000 you told me 50000 for every $50,000 that you want to retire on, you've got to put away a million dollars. Now, remember the beginning of our conversation. What are you deliberately doing to put money away? Hear this. So you understand, I bought my very first house in my early 20s. I'm 40. A little bit more than 40. I'm close to 40. And I've just been doing that. Again and again and again. This is what we did. Now get this. You know when you're going to get this done? Is when you get emotionally involved with the possibility of that being real for you. When that becomes real for you, the possibility of actually doing this. Well, where do you go? First decision you've got to make is to pay yourself first. Second decision you've got to make is a decision to drive capital. And start buying one after the other after the other. But you know what? You were busy, aren't you? <laughs> if you knew, folks, how many people come to see us and they are busy, genuinely busy, preoccupied with their current mortgage, with their current state of affairs. The fact that the family is growing, they need to buy a bigger house. They have made no distinction about personal debt and investment debt. And that is one day. It's only a small percentage of people. That's why it's awesome to see this auditorium so full. So many of you are getting this. And it's great to me when I see you writing notes and they smiles. And I really appreciate that. I really, really do. You see, for me then, the conversation here is this. Please, will you please start teaching others the possibilities of creating wealth in a brand new country called Australia. It's just a matter of making a decision of driving capital. That's all that we are talking about. So now, is that okay with you? If I start showing you a few other things, I need to move on. Okay? Here it is. For this guy, this Tuesday is a photocopy of the Tuesday before. Thursday is a photocopy of the Thursday before. Watch him just looking at the edges of the cage. As if something's going to happen and change. No. He has the same bills and he's just chasing to pay the same bills. It's referred to as the rat race. In Rich Dad, Poor Dad is a book that I highly recommend people should read. See, when you look about the ride, when the global financial meltdown comes, here's the ride. You know, it's woo Down the hill we go. Guys, we have had lines of credit. 100% 100% offset accounts. We have had the best finance that there is in this country for the last 20 years. And still we see on a daily basis new clients come along and they have no idea about finance. Not financial, finance alone is strategies. How they could have had set up their loans. So never they would have this happen. You know, intensive we have a curriculum we call the JDL DNA of Wealth. It's an intensive day. We talk about finance for what it is. We've got to learn these things and teach them to our kids. And teach them our kids. This is not necessary. This happens, right? When people find themselves like this is when they did not have buffers. Is when their finances were set wrong. They didn't understand. And then suddenly, oh, the business went down. And with it went the house. Only if somebody set them with the right finance structure from the beginning. 
And the only the right finance structure comes from understanding, not from somebody trying to sell finance, especially when you show up at a bank and the bank manager is trying to make the quote because he needs to pay his mortgage. What mortgage? Well, the mortgage he took on, on upon his promotion, and now he's totally hypnotized by his income, and now he matches his income to his expenses. When is that manager going to sit with you and say, let me design you a finance strategy? Never. Do you know why? It's not because he doesn't want to. It's because he hasn't seen it. A typical financial planner is going to try to sell you some managed funds. These things are not that hard. And that when you live in a society, everybody's trying to flog your product. That's our commitment in JDL to teach people financial intelligence. is a commitment that comes from here. You know, it's a commitment saying to people, get your financial intelligence worked out. Then when you act going forward, things are not just thrown at you. There is a system. You do not need to find yourself in a position like this. 